Bang & Olufsen was started in 1925 by two partners, Peter Bang and Sven Olufsen. They built Europe's first mains-powered radio, which meant it didn't have to have batteries, it could simply play forever. They initially started by working in the Olufsen's farmhouse up in the attic, um, but as the company started selling more and more products, they hired more and more people, and uh, once they hit about 30 employees, they couldn't fit in the farmhouse anymore, so they, they built a building here in Struer that we call Factory One. Today, uh, Bang & Olufsen is a, a much larger company. We have our R&D here in Struer, we have uh, headquarters in Copenhagen, and we have production facilities both in the Czech Republic and in China. In total, we're about 2,000 people. The initial idea of BLAB 90 was that we wanted to make a loudspeaker that could be two speakers in one. On one side, it had to be a loudspeaker that would fulfill the needs of, of a really demanding audiophile, so somebody who sat and listened to music or listened to recordings with one chair and did nothing else. At the same time, it should be able to change its characteristics so that it could be good for somebody sitting down to watch a movie with their family or, or just having background music at a party. That's really two different speakers, and we wanted to be able to do both with one product. From there, those two ideas merged into one thing. So on the next prototype, had a speaker that could change the width of its beam, a bit like changing from a spotlight to a light bulb, but also could rotate the sound. In order to do what we were trying to do, which was to, to control the width of that sound beam, we realized we needed multiple drivers with multiple amplifiers. What that means in the end is that we have seven tweeters, seven mid-ranges, and four woofers, and each of those has to be individually controlled. So we have 14 amplifiers, 14 DACs, and 14 channels of processing. We have complete control over each driver individually. We're trying to reduce the amount of energy that's reflected off your sidewalls in order to make your room behave more like a recording studio and therefore you hear what the recording engineer heard. To do that, what we're doing is using the side drivers, so say the side mid-range, to cancel the sound that's coming from the front mid-range as it goes out the side. So the end result is that these two drivers cancel each other off to the side of the loudspeaker and therefore there's less energy headed towards the wall to reflect. In addition to the beam width control, it also has other technologies. Uh, one of them is called active room compensation, which is a system that allows you to measure the sound or the response of the speaker at your listening position. And it will analyze what the room has done to the sound and build a filter to undo that effect. So that way you get a behavior or a sound experience in your listening position that's more like what we've intended from the loudspeaker. The main cabinet of BLAB 90, it's actually 65 kilos of poured aluminum. The reason for that was to have a cabinet that's stiff enough to be able to withstand the pressures that are generated by those four woofers working in unison. But also, aluminum is a great conductor of heat, and since all the amplifiers and the power supply are all built into the speaker, we needed something that could get the heat generated by those electronics back out. The upper section for the loudspeaker is made out of a plastic um, that's reinforced with fibers to make sure that it doesn't flex when we get the, the pressure that's built up by the, the mid-range drivers. The tweeters, of course, have their own cabinets built in, so we don't need to worry about that. All of the electronics for the speaker sit in what we call the engine bay. That's a sealed cabinet that's separate from the woofer cabinets um, that has two hinged doors that let us get into the power supply, all of the amplifiers, and the digital signal processing board. Another technology that we have in BLAB 90, which we initially came out with 12 years ago with BLAB 5, is what's called thermal compression compensation. This is a technology that undoes some of the effects, the physical effects that drivers have when they get hot. If you measure a loudspeaker at one temperature and you measure it again at another temperature, you'll get a completely different response. This is because the, the driver, the voice coil itself, has gotten hot. BLAB 90 is able to measure in real time the temperature of the woofers, let's say, and undo that effect. As the BLAB 90 development process evolved, we realized that we needed a speaker that had a very wide frequency range. In the end, we wound up with a, a loudspeaker that could go all the way to 40 kilohertz, an octave above the normal limits of human hearing, and down to about 10 hertz. That low end gives us the ability to reproduce any orchestral instrument faithfully, but also can double as a subwoofer. So for example, if you're listening to explosions in a, in a movie, you don't need a subwoofer along with the system. This can act like the subwoofer for your entire 5.1 system. In the end, I, I really believe that we've made a speaker that can fulfill both roles that we set out to do in the beginning. Um, it, it's a very precise and accurate loudspeaker for the demanding audiophile that's sitting at home alone, but at the same time on Friday night, it can be used just to play movies with the kids.